Terry always liked winning and being the best at everything. He has always been top of his class and even the whole school. However, a turning point occurred when he faced unexpected defeat in a regional math and science quiz against his opponent, Mike. In the final round, Mike hit the buzzer first, answered the last question correctly, and Terry lost. Terry felt furious and defeated, experiencing his first taste of failure. In frustration, he stormed out of the quiz venue right after Mike was declared the winner. After that, he tried joining more competitions in hopes of meeting Mike again to win against him, but they never crossed paths again. As college began, Terry found himself assigned a roommate, although he really preferred having a room to himself. He could only hope for a roommate who wouldn't be bothersome and messy, because he valued his peace and preferred a tidy living space. He entered his assigned room and was relieved to see everything in order. At least his roommate was tidy. As Terry stood there, his roommate emerged from the bathroom, dripping wet and completely unclothed. Reacting swiftly, Terry covered his eyes exclaiming, Put some clothes on, please. The roommate unfazed chuckled and casually asked Terry to pass the towel. Keeping his eyes shut, Terry grabbed the towel and tossed it over. After dressing up, the roommate approached Terry, who still had his eyes closed, and teased, You can open your eyes now. Terry opened his eyes and was startled to find his roommate's face unexpectedly close to his. Instinctively, he stepped back questioning, Why are you standing so close to me? The roommate nonchalantly responded, I wanted to see your face clearly. Terry looked at him silently for a few moments before expressing annoyance, Wait you, what are you doing here? The roommate replied with a sarcastic tone, I'm here to do my laundry, what else do people do in college? Terry rolled his eyes and asked, Don't you remember me? The roommate skinned Terry from head to toe and remarked, Ooh, I remember you now. The guy who looked so angry he could burst just because he lost to me in a regional competition. Terry's roommate turned out to be none other than Mike. Terry retorted, You only won because you were lucky. Mike shrugged and replied, Whatever. I can't believe you still remember me after all these years. Do you have a crush on me or something? Terry scoffed, First of all, it has only been a year, and secondly, I would rather eat dirt than have a crush on you. Mike, with an annoying grin, teased, now I'm sure you definitely have a crush on me. And then lounged on his bed, engrossed in playing games on his phone. Determined to avoid sharing a room with Mike, Terry stormed out of the room and headed to the office responsible for room assignments, hoping to secure a change. However, he received disappointing news from the office personnel, stating that room changes were not permitted once assigned until graduation. Terry was frustrated at the prospect of having to endure sharing a room with annoying Mike throughout his college years. Upon returning to the room, Terry took immediate action by drawing a line to demarcate his bed space from Mike's. He sternly instructed Mike never to cross the line to his side. Mike, with a sarcastic smile, remarked, The bathroom is on my side. Does that mean you don't get to use the bathroom? Terry responded firmly, Apart from the bathroom, which we will both share, don't cross the line to my side, and I won't cross to yours. Also, don't talk to me unless you have something important to say. With a smirk, Mike returned to his game, while Terry proceeded to unpack his belongings. In class, while Terry was patiently waiting for the instructor to arrive, Mike unexpectedly took a seat beside him and casually greeted, Hey roommate. Terry, looking at him with a shocked expression, inquired, What are you doing here? Mike began to form a sarcastic response, but then sighed instead. Terry discovered that Mike was in the same department, meaning they shared the same classes. This realization presented Terry with an opportunity to prove that he was better than Mike. Observing Mike's lack of engagement in class, where he often slept, and noting his constant focus on games back in the dorm room, Terry concluded that Mike wasn't a worthy opponent. Realizing the futility of competing with someone not committed to studying, Terry decided to shift his focus entirely to his own academics. After the mid-semester exams, Terry anticipated topping all the classes, but to his surprise, someone else's name was at the top Mike. Terry was bewildered, struggling to comprehend how Mike, who seemed to spend most of his time playing games and sleeping, had claimed the first position. Dismissing it as luck, Terry refused to accept defeat and intensified his efforts. 
committing to studying even harder for the upcoming end of semester exams. He was determined not to lose to Mike any longer. As the end of semester exams approached, Terry was confident that this time he would secure the top position in the class. However, when the results were announced, he was once again disappointed to find himself in second place. To make matters worse, Mike retained the top spot in the entire department. Terry felt a mix of annoyance, sadness, and confusion. Accustomed to always being the first, he struggled to comprehend how Mike, seemingly without any effort, could surpass him consistently. Reflecting on Mike's behavior, Terry recalled that Mike never returned to the dorm room immediately after class, but rather in the evening. This led Terry to speculate that Mike might be spending time studying at the library after class. Terry suspected that Mike's return to the dorm, which was accompanied by loud game playing, was to intentionally disrupt his studying and concentration. He then thought that if Mike had planned all this, then he wouldn't just sit and do nothing. He would also plan something to distract Mike from studying. Seeking assistance, Terry turned to his lifelong friend Jamie. Terry had been friends with Jamie since they were kids, and Jamie was the only friend Terry had. Because no one wanted to be friends with Terry due to his inclination to engage in intense competition with everyone, even during casual activities. Jamie was the only one who was able to tolerate Terry and be friends with him till this day. Terry requested Jamie to feign interest in Mike, encouraging him to develop feelings for her. The plan was for Jamie to distract Mike with dates and typical romantic activities. Terry suggested that Jamie could end the Fox romance later, potentially leaving Mike heartbroken and unable to concentrate on his studies. Recognizing Jamie's penchant for being attracted to guys, Terry was confident she would agree to help him. Jamie had a habit of swooning over and flirting with every guy she deemed hot and handsome. Mike, in Terry's eyes, undeniably fell into the category of being hot and handsome, a fact he would never admit. Without hesitation, Jamie readily accepted the task. When school resumed, Terry deliberately brought Jamie to the dorm room to assist with unpacking, providing Jamie the opportunity to meet Mike. Upon entering the room, Jamie swiftly took a seat beside Mike on his bed, visibly taken aback by Mike's attractiveness. She attempted to flirt with Mike, he astutely asked, Are you flirting with me? Jamie, maintaining a smirk, replied, Is it that obvious? To her surprise, Mike responded, I'm sorry, but I'm not into girls, I only like guys. Jamie, with an exuberant smile on her face, exclaimed, Really? What type of guys are you into? Mike casually turned his head and pointed directly at Terry. Terry looked around him, as if someone else was beside him. His eyes then locked with Jamie, who sported an evil grin and was intently staring at him. Terry immediately understood the implications of that mischievous smile. Jamie, aware of his preference for guys, had been shipping him with every guy she knew. Now he is going to have to deal with her shipping him with Mike. Jamie turned to Mike and inquired, Do you like Terry? Mike, wearing a sly grin, responded, No, I only like guys like Terry, but I don't like Terry. Jamie persisted. Are you sure? Isn't there a possibility that you'll ever like Terry? He's a really sweet person if you get to know him. Mike, looking at Terry, retorted. Well, he's not giving me any chance to get to know him. Jamie was about to say something, but Terry promptly ushered her out, saying, I think it's time for you to go back to your own dorm and close the door. When he turned, his face closely met Mike's face. Terry quickly and nervously moved back. Mike then asked, Did you just cross the line? You drew yourself to my side? Terry had even forgotten about the line he had drawn. He nervously blurted out, I'm sorry, then hurriedly ran out. Since that day, Terry couldn't concentrate on studying like he used to. Thoughts of Mike lingered in his mind, and Jamie's constant questions about Mike only added to his frustration. He one time stood up from his books, walked up to Mike, disregarding the drawn line, and exclaimed, stay away from me, as if that would somehow erase Mike from his thoughts. One day, on the day of an important exam, Terry noticed that Mike was still in bed, asleep. Initially tempted to wake him, Terry reconsidered, seeing it as an opportunity. He quietly left, allowing Mike to sleep and potentially miss the exam. However, as Terry began writing the test, a sense of guilt crept in. 
Mike's absence only intensified his feelings of remorse. After the exam, Terry hurried back to the dorm room and found Mike sitting on his bed, appearing lost in thought. Terry sensed that Mike's demeanor was due to missing the exam. Although Terry wanted to apologize, the words stuck in his throat. Silently retreating to his side of the room, he lay on the bed, consumed by guilt. Days later, after class, Terry overheard a heated argument in his dorm room. It was between Mike and a man who, Terry found out to be Mike's father. The man expressed disappointment in Mike for missing an exam, emphasizing the expectation for him to excel in every endeavor. In response, Mike expressed his weariness with the pressure to always be the best. The argument escalated, and Mike's father declared that if Mike was tired of that life, he could no longer be his son. Just then, the door opened and the man, Mike's dad angrily walked out without even noticing Terry. Terry then went into the room, slowly walking up to Mike, who was sadly sitting on his bed. Terry asked, Are you okay? With a soft, low voice. Mike looked at Terry and asked, What did you hear everything and now you want to show pity to me? Terry quickly replied, No, I'm just feeling guilty because all this is my fault. I could have woken you up that day when I saw you sleeping, but I intentionally left you to sleep because of my crazy competitive behavior. I'm so sorry. I promise I'll do anything to make it up to you. Mike stood up with a quick smirk, without Terry noticing, then moved his face closer to Terry's face and asked, Are you sure you will do anything? Terry hesitated then replied, Yes. Mike then, with a smile, said, Then I want us to be friends. Terry, who wasn't expecting such a request, exclaimed, Huh. Mike then asked, Why do you want to keep fighting and don't want to be friends with me? Terry immediately replied nervously, No, I mean I do want to be friends with you. Mike then said, Okay, then from now on, we are friends. We can start this friendship by you cleaning the line you drew separating us. Terry immediately went and started to clean the line. From that day forward, Terry and Mike's friendship grew stronger. Instead of competing for the first position, they studied together, worked on projects together, and even ate together at the cafeteria. However, Jamie was always with them, seizing every chance to bring Mike and Terry together. Mike and Terry became like Siamese twins. Wherever Terry went, Mike followed, and vice versa. Terry was taking a bath one night when the lights went off, plunging the entire building into darkness. In a panic, Terry quickly grabbed his towel, wrapping it around his waist, and called out for Mike. Mike rushed into the bathroom, turning on his phone flashlight. Terry, looking scared with soap on his body, took the phone light to finish his bath. Mike replied okay then stood there watching Terry. Terry said I didn't say stand there and watch me, stay here in the bathroom not in front of me. Mike replied, oh, and shifted to the side, staying in the bathroom as Terry requested. Terry then asked Mike to talk to him, ensuring he was still there. As Mike engaged in conversation, Terry finished his bath. Afterward, with both of their phones out of battery, Mike assisted Terry in finding his clothes to dress up in the darkness. Mike went to lay in his bed after he had done helping Terry, but Terry didn't go to his bed. Instead, he stood beside Mike's bed. Mike noticed him and asked, Are you scared? To which Terry replied with a hesitant no. Mike could tell Terry was scared because he always slept with his bedside light on. He pulled Terry to sleep beside him. As they were laying in bed, Terry nervously asked, Can you hug me to sleep? Mike replied with a grin, Are you flirting with me? Terry replied, No, never mind, forget it. Mike then, slowly moving his hands from Terry's waist to his back, hugged him. Suddenly, Mike asked, Have you ever kissed someone? Terry replied, No. Mike then said, I knew it. Your face is always buried in your books. There's no way you'll have time to kiss someone, or even date. Terry defended himself, My face is not always buried in books. Mike then asked, Do you want to try kissing? Terry replied, I will one day of course, when I meet the right person. Mike then said, I mean, do you want to try kissing me? I want to be that right person. Terry remained silent, staring at Mike while his heart skipped several beats. Mike teased, if you don't say anything, I'll take it as a yes and kiss you. Without overthinking, 
Terry kissed Mike first and then pulled away. Mike interpreted it as consent, pulling Terry closer to him, eliminating the space between their bodies. He gave Terry the most beautiful and passionate first kiss. Just as they were kissing, the lights came back on. When Terry realized it, he quickly pulled away, running to his bed and burying his face in his pillow. Meanwhile, Mike just watched him with a smile. The next morning, Mike approached Terry, expressing, I don't want to be just friends with you anymore. I want to pursue you until you like me back, because I've already fallen for you. Terry, maintaining a straight face, replied, Do whatever you want, before calmly walking away. Once outside, he released a breath. He didn't realize he was holding. Terry had already fallen in love with Mike too, but he thought it would be fun to see Mike pursuing him. In the following days, Mike went out of his way to win Terry's heart. He prepared breakfast for Terry before he woke up, ensuring he didn't have to stand in a queue for a morning meal before class. Although Mike actually bought the breakfast, he pretended to have made it. Terry played along, maintaining a poker face when presented with the meal. Despite knowing it was store-bought, he felt touched and excited on the inside while keeping a composed exterior. Whenever Terry went to class, Mike arrived early to save the seat Terry preferred, ensuring it wouldn't be taken by someone else. Mike persisted in his efforts to make Terry's heart flutter for him. One day after class, a girl approached Mike and inquired whether he was single. Terry, now feeling a pang of jealousy, observed Mike, with a raised eyebrow, anticipating his response. Mike replied to the girl, whether I'm single or not depends on someone here. I think he can give you the answer, turning to look at Terry. Terry glanced at the girl, fake smiled, and said, sorry, but he's taken, while holding Mike's hand. As the disappointed girl walked away, Terry let go of Mike's hand, ready to run, but Mike quickly grabbed him. Mike said, you claimed ownership of me, and now you are running away? Terry then said, I wasn't running away, I was just. Mike said, you have automatically agreed to date me now, and there is no going back. Terry replied with a soft m. Mike smiled and said, now let's go back to our room. Terry stood there looking at Mike with a suspicious expression. Mike asked, why are you looking at me like that? I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm only going to give you a couple of kisses, then undress you. Terry quickly stepped back and said, then I'm not following you. I'll be sleeping in another room. Mike laughed and said, I was just kidding. I promise I'm not going to do anything to you. When they got to their dorm room, Mike entered first, waiting at the door for Terry to enter. The moment Terry walked in, Mike closed the door, pinned Terry against it, and started kissing him. Gently pushing Mike away, Terry said, you promise not to do anything to me. Mike replied, I only promise not to undress you. I didn't promise not to kiss you. Saying that, he resumed the kiss. Terry was captivated by the kiss, desiring more. Mike gently pulled away, placing a sweet kiss on his forehead, before heading to his own bed. When they shared the news with Jamie that they were officially dating, she emitted a scream so loud it resonated throughout the building. Overjoyed, she embraced them both, exclaiming, Finally, one of my ships is sailing. Mike, wearing a slightly jealous expression, inquired, how many ships has Terry had? Jamie knew where this was going, and quickly made up a silly excuse and fled the scene. Mike didn't stop doing the things he did for Terry while pursuing him even after officially dating him. Going above and beyond to express his affection. Meanwhile, Terry shifted his focus away from turning everything into a competition. Focusing on his own life and love life, 